When you come over and you're ready to start uh, taking clamps off or wondering if the time is right to take them off, one thing we're looking for is the glue and the color of the glue. So this glue is lighter yellow than this piece of material here. This darker yellow color is going to indicate to us that the glue is nice and dry. This lighter yellow color is going to mean that it's still somewhat fresh. And we can touch the glue bead joint here and you can see that it's still liquid underneath that crusted over surface. So I would say this piece is not quite ready to remove from the clamps yet, so we would wanna leave that alone. But when we do take our clamps off, we wanna put them back in the clamp rack so they are um, not laying out on the floor so that the glue table is clean for someone who's coming over to work on the glue table. So we've now taken our pieces out of the clamp. It's been about 24 hours since we clamped them and glued them. So we're taking them out, we're gonna start the next process. Now you can see a couple black spots on here. This is a chemical reaction where the glue and the wood and the metal clamp are touching each other and it turns black like that for some reason. Um, that should sand off of your project, not a big deal. You'll notice that these glue ridges that we left on the project are still there. They're nice and heavy lines of glue. So that's gonna make it easier when we try to remove them. If we look at the other side, this was the side that was down when we glued it. You can see these bubbles of glue as gravity was pulling them as they were drying. And we need to scrape this glue off. If we take this to one of our machines, whether it's a handheld sander or our wide belt sander, this glue is going to heat up and transfer to our sandpaper belt. So we're going to scrape it off the best we can before we take it to any machinery. So we're gonna clamp it down to the table so that it doesn't move around on us. I'm gonna take my scraper, just an ordinary paint scraper we're gonna to use to scrape some glue off and we're gonna hit all these ridges of glue and get them worked down so that it can safely go through our machine. If we leave these ridges of glue, uh, another thing that could happen is if we take it to a cutter like a saw or a router bit, the glue dries super hard. So if the router or, or saw is coming along cutting the wood and all of a sudden it hits something really hard like a, a bead of glue, that can damage the carbide teeth on our machines. So we want to remove it for that reason as well, so there's not this big bead of glue for the carbide to, to hit. So I'm going to take my scraper and I'm just going to scrape up and down the wood and work these beads of glue off. All right, so we'll notice that most of the glue has gone off here. There's a few spots that maybe got smeared around on us and now we can't scrape that really well because there's nothing sticking up. So any time that that glue gets smeared, it's very difficult to get out of the wood because now it's kind of crusted over the wood grain and it's flat so it can't be scraped off. There's a little bit over here. There's a little ridge where the two boards are offset and there's some glue still in this joint. So we'd wanna pay attention to that a little bit more and get some more of that off before flipping the board over. Okay, so we got the board flipped over. Now we're gonna address the glue on this side. Again, those ridges that we left yesterday when gluing are going to scrape hopefully off nice for us so we're not left with a glue mess.
All right, if we take a look now, the glue is a lot more cleaned up than it was before. Not any major ridges of glue. There's still a little bit on here, but uh, we're gonna have to do our best to work around that and try to prevent this from transferring to our machines. Again, if you've got a little bit on there, take just a little bit more time and try one more time to get that glue off before moving on. All right, this is our next board. We flipped, uh, got this clamped down so it doesn't move so much on us. We're gonna come in and scrape off the glue. All right, at this point, we're gonna take our pieces over and get them cleaned up on the wide belt sander. All right, we're here at the wide belt sander. We need to measure the thickness of our board to set the machine to the correct size. So I'm gonna take my caliper, make sure it's zeroed out, and I'm gonna measure my board. Now I'm looking for a joint that maybe has a little bit of an offset, and I'm gonna measure that offset. I want the thickest part of the board to be measured so that I am getting the biggest size. So with this board, I would set this to 0 0.98. About 0.98 is where we're gonna go for this one. Again, if you have a board that's this bad, we would wanna make sure that we definitely measure this widest part when taking your measurement because we need to set the machine to the widest part, otherwise we could damage the machine by trying to take off too much at once. So if you have a big offset like this, measure your thickest point when setting the machine. So I'm gonna turn the machine on, turn the main power on, and push the green main start button. Now my screen comes alive over here. We're gonna program it to 0.98. So I'm gonna hit program, 0.98, enter, start. The table is going to adjust to the size we enter. Remember the top number is our entered value. The second number is the machine size. So we don't want to move until that machine size, the actual size, is where we need to be. Now we can get ready to turn the machine on, but before we make all that noise, we're going to talk about feeding our workpiece into the machine. So because I have these glue joints that may still have a little bit of residue of glue on the top surface, it didn't come off when I scraped, we want to feed the workpiece in at a slight angle. This is going to allow us to sand it and get it cleaned up, but what it's not going to do is create a burn mark on the belt or a spot of glue on the belt in the same spot. If I feed it in straight in, then this line is hitting my sanding belt in the same spot the entire time. So that sanding belt is rotating around, hitting that same spot every time. If we go at a slight angle, now as that sanding belt comes, there's only hitting that glue joint in a different spot um, for a second. It's not hitting the same spot of glue over and over like it would before. So we wanna put our piece in the first couple passes at a slight angle, as long as you have enough room. Remember your minimum length on this machine is 12 inches. Shorter than 12 inches, we can't sand it. So we're gonna go ahead, turn the brake off, start the head and the feed rollers. Make sure your board's not gonna start rolling away from you. And then we're going to turn the dust system on.
bulk of that glue is gone, we can feed them in straight in since there's no more glue on our joints. We do need to sand a little bit more to get rid of this black spot. We're gonna sand it in straight with the grain now. All right, our pieces are now cleaned up on both sides. And what we're really hoping for is to have these cleaned up and leave them as thick as possible. The thicker we can leave them, uh, they look a little bit better on the project. The thinner we go, the project starts to look a little goofy when you put a top on and it's only got a three quarter or a half inch thick top. Plus we need to be careful because one of these two has our biscuits in there. And if we sand too much, we're going to expose our biscuit joints. So we just want to clean them up so they're nice and smooth on both sides. No glue, no defects. Any chips are sanded out of the way. Now when I was up here at the sander, you may have noticed I ran my pieces at an angle several times until most of the glue on the surface was gone. So even though I ran it two or three times before changing it, uh, to be straight in line, uh, that was okay. Really what we want to do is just make sure that that very last pass you do is in line with the grain to help prevent you getting cross grain on your work pieces or scratches against your grain. Now, we tried to put those at an angle to save the belt from getting glue transferred to it all in one spot. And you'll notice that we worked on one side until that one side was all the way cleaned up. And then at that point, we flipped them over and worked on the other side. When we flipped them over, we started doing the angle again because the angle is going to prevent the glue from build up. We got a new side that could have some glue on it. So we go through at a slight angle the first couple passes. Now, you may have heard the machine sound like it really wasn't sanding much those first couple passes, and it probably wasn't because when we measured, we measured the thickest point. So that thickest point right here on the end of the board was what was getting sanded. So it took a couple passes to get that down. It may have only been sanding that one little glue joint uh, down each pass. So it really wasn't sanding the whole board. You notice when we got closer to the end, it sounded like it was sanding and hitting the workpiece a lot more. Now that we got these sanded to a finish cut or finish size, now we're gonna go over and take these and cut them down to the finish size that we need our pieces to finish at. And we're gonna do that at the sliding table saw. So let's go over there. When you're done sanding your top and your door, you may want to pay attention to the number that you left off on. Because as you make your drawer front, you may want your drawer front to be the same thickness as your door. Otherwise you might have it look a little off if one is thinner than the other. So if we pay attention to that number, that's where we're gonna finish the drawer front so that it's at the same thickness as the door. So before you leave the machine and someone else messes with the settings, make sure you write that on your board or put that down somewhere where you can find it later on in your plans. All right, I'm here at the table saw. Before we cut, we wanna verify our sizes not only on the plans, but also measuring the physical opening that we have created of the door and the physical size of the box for the top. And so after verifying those, I've written my sizes on here. I need to finish this board at 15 inches uh, with the grain here, 15 inches, I'm gonna cut across the grain. And this way I'm gonna be at 13 and a half, okay? 
for this size. So I've got my sizes laid on here so I know exactly where I need to cut them. Every cut is going to be different because I have my door is smaller than my top and so forth. Again, I like to start with my longest piece. If I'm going to set this saw to 15 inches and make my cuts, I don't want to forget that I need to go bigger for my door. So I'm going to start with my 15 and a half inch piece because then if I forget to change it, then I still have enough material to cut off the rest of here. So we're going to pull this back and get it ready to go. And we're going to be cutting a little bit off of one side. So this is squaring up the board to the, to the side that we're going to use as our straight edge. So you'll notice that there are a couple, a couple offsets in these boards. They're not too bad, so I think we'll be okay because we have about two inches extra on this board to cut off. And so I think we'll be okay, we'll have enough room. What I'm going to do, since I don't know if one of these edges have been jointed, I don't know if one of them is straight or not, I am going to determine that now for the, for the rest of the project by pushing this tight against the fence. As I push my board tight against the fence, I'm looking for a nice tight fit up along the fence. There's a slight gap here in the middle, so maybe I'll flip this board around and try that way. So I don't like the way that one fits, that one's a little worse. It's kind of got an angle the whole way. So I'm going to use this side as my straight edge. It's the straighter of my two edges. Now we're going to come in, we're going to cut a little bit off of one side. We're going to flip it over and cut the rest off and we're going to keep that X against the fence the whole time. So let's get this turned on. Quarter turn the red button, turn the knob forward, turn the main saw on. When it gets to full speed, turn it back. So there's our board all squared up, nice straight edges. Okay, there's no more offsets on the end. That looks good. Now, if you come to a situation where maybe you got a defect here, maybe you got a little chip on the end or a spot that still has some glue and you wanna take the most you can off of here, you can just skim this side with the blade as long as it cuts every piece. So as you're cutting and that blade comes along and it's cutting every piece so it's nice and squared up, it doesn't matter if that's a quarter inch or whatever, then on the other side you could flip it over and take the max amount off and that might be an inch and a half then. So you're taking a small amount off one side, taking a bigger amount off the other if you've got a defect. If you don't have a defect you're worried about, you can take it off evenly, roughly about the same off of each side. So let's cut our next one. That's going to be to 15 inches. Got my board ready to go, 15 inches. Again, we measured our sizes and they're written on here. Our offsets are not too big on this one. Nice and straight cuts, so that's fine. Nothing to really worry about on this one as far as making sure I get it all cut off. So I'm going to go ahead and take a little off one side and flip it over. I first need to find the straight edge. So I'm gonna again use the fence of the saw and push it up tight and make sure we're tight, nice, and the whole way. Now I do see a little bump right in here and one right in here on this board. And that's gonna be because where the clamps were, those jaws really dug in on this board. So maybe we wanna see if the other edge is straighter. Okay, now this edge when I put it here has a little bit of a rock. So when I push on this side of the board, it moves tight to the fence. And when I'm pushing on this side of the board, I look at the other side, there's a small gap. And if I come over there and push, that board rocks back and forth. That would not be a good edge to use because when I'm cutting, if it shifts on me, my board's not gonna stay in one spot. 
So I'm going to come back to this side, even though we've got those little bumps on there from where the claw of the or the jaw of the clamp dug in, I'm going to use that as my straight edge. We'll take a little bit off of that later on. Put a pencil mark on there, and now we're going to cut that. When I put my board up to the fence, I can put this stop over the top. And that's going to allow me to visualize a little bit more how much material I have to cut. So I can see here, my next cut is going to be tight against the outside of this stop. So if I'm looking at this, I can see I got a good amount of material here. I can look over here and about the edge of this orange block is where we're going to cut. So we've got a good amount off of each side. We can use these visual indicators to help us see how much we're taking off. All right, so we've got that cut to 15 inches. This next side needs to be 13 and a half. 15, 13 and a half, that's pretty square chunk of wood. You can look at this now and see this is a pretty square chunk of wood. So with a piece like this, we can cut this right here on the sliding table saw. We don't have to go over to the miter or to the regular ripping saw. If we try to do something smaller where it's not quite as square, we might, we might have a chance where that will come away from the fence while we're cutting. So we want to do things that are about square or definitely wider than they are long. So I think this top we can cut here and we're going to take the door over to the saw and cut it over there. So I'm going to set this to 13 inches. So now I've got my stop set at 13 and a half inches. I'm going to make sure there's no sawdust built up along there. Now I don't need to worry about which side I cut off of last because I'm gonna keep this side against the fence and I'm gonna flip it just like I did before. So done my jointed edges first because we use that to get both of these sides cut. I don't know if you could hear that power loss, but I didn't have the blade turned back. So here's my top all cut to size, 15 inches wide, 13 and a half inches deep. All right, we're over here at the table saw. I'm gonna set my top aside, my top is done. I'm gonna be working on my door. Now my door is already cut to length, to the 15, inch, 15 and a half inches this way. Now we're gonna cut it this way to make it to 10 and an eighth. Now, if you remember when we were over on the saw, and I had this jointed edge against the, or I had this edge against the fence, there was a couple spots that I could feel where my clamp had dug in a little deeper than I would have liked to. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put the X towards the fence for my first cut, and then I'm going to flip the board over and cut it again to get uh, the both sides of the board cut to size and nice and even. So to get rid of those saw, or sorry, to get rid of those clamp marks, I'm gonna cut the board twice. I'm gonna cut one side, then flip it over. So right now, if I measure my boards at 11 and about 9 sixteenths wide, and I need to finish at 10 and an eighth. So maybe my next pass is gonna be at about uh, 11 inches, and that will give me a little bit off of each side. So I'm gonna set the blade height. Remember the blade should be about one eighth to a quarter of an inch, just barely above, that looks good. And I'm gonna set my fence to 11 inches. So I'm gonna put my X that I set on my fence over at the other saw against my fence here. I'm gonna cut it. I'm gonna change the size to the finished size and then flip the board over and cut the other side. Okay. 
So now here's my door, my slab door, all cut to size. I'm also going to be getting my drawer front ready. Now I've got this little piece left over. My drawer front is going to be 7 inches wide. This is 8. And I'm going to be 10 inches long for my finish cut. But because of my minimum length for my machines, I need to bump this up to 12 inches minimum to uh, have enough to safely run through the machines. So I'm not actually going to cut this to a rough size. It's already small enough that I can easily manage it through the machines. Remember, rough cutting is to get a manageable size to feed through the machines. So this is my drawer front. I'm going to take it to the jointer and get a cleaned up edge. We're going to use the most of this chunk, so I just need one jointed edge for now. So I've got my drawer front. My drawer front has been jointed. I've got that marked. Now I'm going to run it through the sander and I want to finish at the same thickness that I finished my door and drawer at, at my top and door at. So I'm going to sand the drawer front so that all three of them uh, match or at least the door and the drawer front match. They should be the same thickness. So I'm going to look at what I had that set at before. So I had that set at point 872 is my finished size. So now we need to set the machine, but I can't set it right to 872 because that would take too much off. So I'm going to measure this with my caliper zeroed out. And I'm at about 0.8 or 0.93. So I'm going to have a couple passes. I'm going to get this set to 0.93. I'm going to come up here and hit program 0.93, enter, and start. While that's going, I'm going to turn the machine on and turn the dust system on. So I got my drawer front all sanded up now. You may have noticed when I was sanding, I went to one side and sanded, and then I came back to the original side because there was a little blemish up in the top corner that I was trying to get away, uh, to get gone from sanding. And what I was trying to do is find a side that's going to be adequate for us. Now, it's personal preference if you want knots and things like that in there. There's nothing wrong with the knots. But if you don't want them in there, then you would need to use the other side. If you're going to use this side, then we wanted to take care of that blemish that is mostly taken care of. There's still a white streak in here, but that's part of the wood growth. So now we're going to cut it to size. I have my jointed side that's all cleaned up. That's going to go against the fence. And I'm going to cut this so the drawer front is one inch bigger than the opening. That will allow for our half inch overlay. So my drawer opening is six inches. That means my drawer front needs to be seven inches. So I'm gonna set my fence to seven inches. And we're gonna cut it. If you have a drawer that's wider, maybe you have a drawer that's 10 inches or 12 inches, depending on your design, you may 
need to glue some pieces together and you're going to follow the steps that we previously laid out for gluing panels together. You're going to cut boards in half, you're going to have your annual rings every other direction and so forth. If your piece of wood is not wide enough to make your drawer front out of one piece, or if your drawer front is greater than about eight inches, you'd want to do that in multiple pieces. So we decided on this board to cut the width first. And the reason for that is, is we need to cut this to seven inches and this way needs to be to 10 inches. So once I cut this to 10 inches, it is then too small to run through our saws and sander. So we wanted to get this all prepped first. We wanted to cut it with the grain first because once we cut against the grain, it's going to be too small. So now we're gonna to go to the sliding table saw and cut. All right, I need to locate my jointed edge, which is here with an X. I now am going to cut off any excess material and I've got my stop set to 10 inches. So if I put my board up here uh, and I don't want those knots in there, then I could set my extra material right about on the side where those knots are. I can cut off that edge, get rid of that piece and come back and cut this side and get rid of those knots. So once I set that fence, I can better visualize where my chunk of wood is and what's going to be cut off. So go ahead and get that turned on and cut your pieces. So there's my drawer front all ready to go. Now that we have all three of these done, we can take them to the router table and router them. Typically we want the same profile on your door and drawer, and the top could be different, but typically on a project like this, we're gonna do the top, the doors, and the drawers with the same profile on the edge of the board. Now that profile is gonna be determined by you in which pattern you like best. So we're here at the router table. We're gonna set up a router bit so we can router our doors and our top and our drawer front all at the same time. So the profile I've chosen is just a radius and it's going to be this bit right here. And what I'm gonna do first is make sure that that bit spins freely, that that bearing is not seized up so it doesn't burn my material. Then we're gonna go ahead and remove this bit out of the machine by dropping the motor out so once we've got the motor out then we need to get the bit out of there by loosening the collet and we're going to put a small wrench on the motor and a big wrench opening on the top side and we're going to loosen that if you position these wrenches just right you should be able to do that one-handed loosen that nut so it's finger loose it's going to get tight again so i'm going to still need my wrenches and this time it's going to unlock from the collet. So now I should be able to pull my bit out of there and have it come out. We're gonna put this back on the wall so that it doesn't fall and hit the floor or get damaged by sitting over here on the metal and the carbide teeth get chipped or whatever reason might be. We wanna put this away so it's being sec uh, securely taken care of. Okay, so here's my new bit. The first thing I'm gonna do is take the collet all the way out and clean those chips out of there. I wanna verify there's no chips or debris left in those little channels. So I'm just tapping that out and then I'm gonna start threading it on there, making sure it goes on nice and smooth. I shouldn't need a wrench or anything to get that started. It should go on nice and easy with my fingers. Now I'm gonna take my bit and I'm gonna push it down into the collet and start getting that snug. Now I don't want my bit to be bottomed out against the collet nut or the shaft of the, the bit to be down touching the motor. So I'm gonna push it all the way down until I get this nut ready to be tightened up. And then I'm gonna pull it up about a quarter inch. 
that's going to ensure that my bit is not sitting on the nut and that the shaft is not bottomed out inside the machine. So now we've got our bit where we want it. We're gonna go ahead and finish tightening that up with our wrenches. We're gonna get it secure so this bit doesn't vibrate loose on us during operation. We don't need to tighten it so tight that the next person can't get it undone, but we want it secure so it doesn't come out. Once you're done, you can put your wrenches back on the tool wall, and now we're ready to install the motor into the base. And I like to stand up and look down through this opening when I'm installing this motor. I'm gonna take the base of the motor, I'm gonna lift it up from the bottom while looking through the hole, and as I look through the hole, I'm trying to locate the two pins that need to fit in one of these two grooves on each side. So I'm gonna get that in place. Lining up that motor with those pins and sliding it up. Okay, I've not locked it because now we need to set the bit height. And I'm gonna take a scrap piece of wood or a piece of wood, doesn't have to be scrap. And I'm gonna set that on the table. And what I'm looking for is for the radius of this bit to be just below the workpiece. So let's zoom in and take a look. So the bottom slope of this radius, again, anytime you're touching the bit, make sure the machine is unplugged. The bottom side of this radius, right on the top corner before it goes down, is what I'm looking at. And I'm trying to get my workpiece to be just under that cutter. If I have that line or that corner in my workpiece, it's gonna make a line. So I'm just trying to get a nice slight radius. So I'm gonna wiggle this up and check it against my board. And as you look and see there, we're just slightly below the board, okay? If I push down while I'm routering, I actually might just barely clear that little lip on the bottom corner. So I'm happy with this setting. Now I'm gonna lock the motor in place with the locking handle down below. You can see my finger in here. And I'm gonna tighten that lever up. Now we're gonna set the fence. Okay, the fence is gonna get us close and the bearing is setting how far in we're cutting. So if I take my workpiece and I set it up on top of the profile so that my workpiece is only touching the bearing and I'm up above the cutter. I'm trying to get the front of the bearing even with the fence. So when my workpiece is on top of the cutter and touching the bearing, I can bring that fence up and then tighten it into place. Now as I'm holding my piece up here, I got a little bit of rock on there. That's going to allow my, me to get my workpiece up to the bearing and then the bearing is ultimately the depth set here that's going to get my correct setting. So I think we're ready to give this a try. We're gonna plug it in, hook up the dust system. Remember when routering, you always want to do the end grains first. And we're gonna do our top, our door, and our drawer front all at the same time, one right after the other. So once you've got the bit set up where you want it, you do not need to take a guess whether it's set right, run a test piece. Don't be afraid to run a test piece to know that it's set right before you cut your good work piece. So take a scrap piece of wood, make sure it's big enough to safely run through the machine, run a test piece and see how it looks. If it needs some adjusting, make an adjustment and run another test piece. There's always plenty of scrap around here, left over from your cuts, or in the garbage laying around that we can find something to run a test piece. So this piece, again, is just a test piece to show us what our profile is gonna look like to make sure we have it set up right if we want a nice smooth cut. And uh, we don't have to run it twice. It's not our good piece. We're just trying to see if it's set where we want. Make sure there's not a deep line in there. There's a little slight indication of a line on this side. 
but that's going to be very minimal to sand out you may want to adjust the blade that's up to you if you don't want that line cut in your project so before running these three pieces of material i want to look at them and these the door and the drawer front are going to be right next to each other so i'm going to want their grain and color pattern to kind of match pretty uniformly so if i look at this side i got this dark streak in here so i think this is going to be my better looking side i'm going to put that side down when i run it okay this has got a white streak in here i'm going to put this more uniform color down and my top here if i look at it again i've got some white streaks in here and i want this to appear like it's one piece of wood so this one's got a dark streak so you're going to have to determine based on personal preference if you like that darker streak in there or if you like these various color tones in this side your per, your preference or your choice on this not a right or a wrong answer we're going to run them through and we're going to do this with the push block to keep them down tight to the table we're going to run the end grains first So here are our three pieces that we routered. Uh, we've chosen to do the roundover bit. The roundover bit is very uh, easy to clean up when we're done routering. We can take the orbital sander and sand this surface. But you're welcome to choose any profile of router bit that you would like. Now one thing to do right now is to verify that my door and drawer front are the same size. We do want them to be same size so as we're looking at the project one of them is not larger or bigger or offset than the other. And our top is also ready to go. These just need to have some prep work done to them before they get installed. They need to be sanded and uh, things like that before they get installed. <laughs> 